Whew. The beauty of life. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful morning. <clears throat> it is Tuesday. On my way to my destination. <sighs> I'll tell you what, energy, vibration, whatever you want to call it, God, whatever it is, uh, <laughs> I have to say one thing, I am actually just, <laughs> I'm drunk from life's energy, the energy of life has filled me up so much I do not even know how to comprehend it. The whole idea of learning about self, self-realization, the ability to not be afraid of life, to lead the way the universe told us to, some people call it God, whatever way you want to call it, the ability to be able to live to your fullest, absolutely amazing, without letting other distractions take you away from what you need to be telling me it's time to start praying <laughs> yeah, so the ability to stay focused and just do what you need to do and just realize that we are all here to serve and sometimes your talent isn't always going to grant you that luxury that you that other people have and we all want to have I am just absolutely absolutely amazed these days <laughs> I think uh, the whole idea of raising a child means one needs to be educated spiritually and mentally before bringing a child to this world. A lot of us were actually brought up into this war by so many who do not know who they are. And due to some intervention, things always occur because when we first come to this universe, we call it the earth, the planet, we are so in tune with ourselves. And we know what we want. We just say it and it comes to, it comes to manifestation, shall I say. But as time goes on, we sort of just missed this thing and we just fall apart. It has been an amazing, amazing, amazing intervention for me. The stuff that I've learned on my feet by asking, meditating, just sitting with myself, moving my feet and wanting to ask questions and wanting to know. <laughs> it is uh, one of the hardest things that I've ever done <laughs> because once you begin to ask those questions and want it to know, it doesn't actually come very easy. It comes with a lot of frustration, a lot of anger, a lot of tears, a lot of tears, a lot of crying, shall I say. <laughs> That's what it comes with because um, other people's clock sometimes can be extremely attractive. So we love that whole thing behind that clock. We. Uh, we just think success is the whole thing behind our material 
my tutor things. And like everyone else, yeah, we all need M-O-N-E-Y. But the beauty about it all is, <laughs> is the ability to know oneself. I have truly, I am in a stage of almost, I wouldn't say disbelieve, but it's a, it is a question of my old pattern and the new one. Because growing up, I was told to go to school, do this, get a job, and settle down. And those things, that is what I've been taught to be successful. Uh, I was told just that, period. Then, not to mention growing up in a colonial era, too, that also sways you away from your spiritual self because what colonial teaches is separation. And once you begin to get more into the ideology of taking from somebody, you separate. When you separate, you separate humankind and you begin to look at people differently from you. you uh, because once that thing is put in your head, that's it. True colonialism and trying to rule others, the side effect is both are caught, caught up in it because when you teach somebody that they're not looking, they're not good enough, their way of thinking is not good enough, what you actually did is create a warm of hatred. And when you're being brought up in a sense of, yes, your tradition is not good enough, your culture is not good enough. Money! Morning. <laughs> what a beautiful day! It is. <laughs> uh, well, you know what? I don't know. They're missing something. <laughs> I really? Oh, I can't believe it. Hey! <laughs> How you doing, buddy? Good dog. Come here, come here. Look at you. <laughs> it's energy. She can feel it. <laughs> All right, sir. You too. <laughs> so, yes. And that vibrational energy. So, when she began to get out of that colonial mindset, that whole ideology of the thing that we most fight about in our culture, the whole thing with slavery and the religion, everybody <laughs> suffered a mental disturbance from it. It is amazing how we look at each other so differently based on race and color. And I just think, oh, look at that water. Is it high or not? <laughs> it is so amazing that once you begin to get out of that mindset, when the healing takes place, you first begin to embrace who you are. Once you embrace who you are, you started to realize that nobody's really different from you after all. And you begin to separate things from, you don't put everybody in the same box. I, uh, hear this word a lot here, but oh, <laughs> let me just keep it quiet, uh, certain group are just so racist, uh, I don't think so, I, uh, I've been among all the cultures, you know, some of them mostly, and because I'm a different individual in my thinking wise, I have seen stereotyping at its best. I begin to realize that a lot of time, no, a lot of time that a lot, most of the time, <laughs> racism isn't about color. Racism is about self-hatred. 
when you do not like yourself oh look at that beautiful 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 <laughs> i just love that look at that beautiful nature when you do not love yourself <laughs> you find ways to make people separate from you there's a saying that i always hear a lot which is black man this white man this when in reality I've never really met a white man because if you know the true essence of color and you can read properly and you can see properly to call somebody white almost I call it the delusion I concept nature I love so much that's why I love coming in it and it fills me with this abundance. Stop praying, don't worry, I'm coming. <laughs> it fills me with this abundance. And uh, when I decolonize myself and begin to wear my own <laughs> natural, <laughs> what do I want to call it? Natural self. I just begin to see that is the whole thing with disliking someone, hatred and anger, it gives you very little power. One of the most powerful thing ever that I can think of is L-O-V-E. Absolutely amazing how that thing can just fill you up and Turn your life around. So, what I'm actually trying to say is, uh, hatred cannot uh, heal hatred. It's funny how every day we are always showing things to make one side look bad. And don't get me wrong, I can't say there's no racism. I can say that there's no people misjudging, but I do know that. Let me bring out my bees. <laughs> uh, but I do know that every time I wear these bees, I get questioned. And I also know that the same people that complain about stereotyping, uh, <laughs> what do you want to call it? Uh, uh, discrimination. Every single day they discriminate against this bee of mine. Oh, my hairstyle. All I have to say is I laugh here. Yeah. All I have to say is I don't believe in certain Judeo ideology. I am cast as an outsider. So when I look at the whole thing, I'm just like, this is all just a concept of <laughs> the colonial concept. So truly, we are not fighting against racism. We are fighting against power. And power is the ability to tell someone else what to do without wanting them to tell you what to do back. <laughs> so this all goes out to the, all the young kids growing up. That whole separation thing been down that, that road but after many many years on my feet it is the most delusionized thing that I've ever come to contact with how someone will go and enslave someone take this take that it has nothing to do with how you look it has something to do with what I call greed so the misinterpretation of all these things is causing a lot of trouble so we make it look like a black and white thing and obviously I look at it to be what the biscuit because <laughs> here in the United, beautiful United States, I've seen both sides, they're no different. I don't even know who's the most racist here anymore, whether it's the black people or white people. <laughs> that I just gotta say that because at the end of the day, when I look at all these groups, and I'm including the Africans too. I don't even know who's the more racist. When I look at all this group, they all have one thing in common. They go to a place on Sundays or on a Friday. And to me, it's just, 
that whole energy, that universe, the universe doesn't know. Can you imagine, look at this beautiful sky that I'm looking at right here. <laughs> the energy that it portrays, this sky right here. How beautiful it is. <laughs> how much energy we have in it. So like I was saying, let me finish up this and continue this 26 mile jog. If you truly want to know yourself, this thing called God, you got to spend time with yourself. I don't care how much book man can wrote. Man's book can give you an idea, but the true understanding will actually come from here. And that's why the whole thing behind teaching sometimes has two entities to it. Many teach and don't practice. Many teach to take control. But the true essence of it all is self-mastering. If you cannot master yourself, and I'm going to say this, by the way you eat, <laughs> how you carry just your ordinary weight, uh, how you drink, how you smoke. If you cannot master what you put in your system, now how in the biscuit can you teach consciousness? And I see that a lot. And I begin to embrace myself even more because I'm thinking, why would you want to teach what you don't practice? So today, let me leave it alone and keep going on this beautiful journey of mine this morning. Absolutely gorgeous out here on this beautiful day. <laughs> and uh, what can I say? Happy Tuesday. It's funny, I've been running 26 miles since April the 18th. I'm loving it. And what else can I say? Give your service. Don't always take. So I've given so much service and I'm so proud of it. So happy Tuesday and one love.